I guarantee that this is the only post video that you will need for NBA 2K24. Not only will I show you the controls on how to do certain moves, but I'll also be showing you the mentality that you should be using in attacking your defenders in the post. The post game is one of the best moves that you have to master just because not a lot of people are good at defending it or have builds that are equipped to defend great low post players, mid post players, and everyone in between. So I'm going to teach you how to be a dynamic post player, a dynamic post to perimeter player, and how to maximize your effectiveness out of the mid range, the low post, and getting into your spots in NBA 2K24. And of course, let's start with the basics. Holding L2 will put you into a post up position. You can do this in the mid post or the low post. Releasing it will give you different types of face up animations. Now, these face up animations are more dynamic than you think. You can launch out of them into your triple threat launch. Just take a look at book right here. We open up that stance, hold the left stick upright, immediately counter with a spin layup. So, your post exits and your face-up game is an equally important part of your low post game. One thing I like to do out of this face-up position by releasing L2 is get into my different types of hop jumpers. And in NBA 2K24, you can even get to advanced hop jumpers. Now let's ignore the miss right there, but that was sweet, right? Tapping up on the right stick will allow your player to change their position in which they're facing. I like to combo this with certain moves. With Giannis right here, I combo that change in position into a nice shimmy hook shot, which is a great way to create misdirection for your opponent. Now, while holding L2 in that post-up position, tapping the left stick in different directions will give you different types of post-pivot moves. So take a look at the left stick here and the movements that Joel Embiid is making. It's almost one-to-one, -one, right? Now, tapping the left stick in the same direction as your initial pivot will give you different types of jab steps, shoulder fakes, and sometimes different types of pivot moves as well. Pivot moves are great ways to create space against your defender. Not only that, they can create contact and open up different types of shot creation such as this nice pivot shimmy move that I execute with Jason Tatum. Again, these are great ways to create angles, create space, and create contact which will lead you to different types of counters. Simple post pivot move right here which I immediately combo into a step back jumper. These are the types of moves that you like to combo with your pivot moves. Take a look at the, how your defender reacts. You can combo it with your hook shots and your different types of shooting mechanics and then create combos out of them. So here's a great example of what post pivot moves can do for you. So I immediately post pivot facing Manu. And what Manu does is he shifts his body to try to defend that post pivot. I counter with a post spin drive, immediately cancel that with a crossover into a post shimmy fadeaway. And don't worry man, if this is a little bit overwhelming right now, I'm gonna go into detail and the different post shots and post combos that we do in these earlier sequences later on. I just wanna focus on post movement right now and the basics of why that's important. So in any of your post up or face up positions out of the post pivot or your standard post entries, you can tap the right stick in different directions. Tapping the right stick for example right there towards your non pivot foot while in a face up position gives you that nice swing animation and you get different types of jab steps and shoulder fakes out of this position. And you already know man, that triple threat swing move is Mamba 101. Manu was not reacting so I just launched for a jump shot. The best way to use these types of jab steps and these swing moves and triple threat combos out of the post is to combo them with your different movement animations such as your spins. You can also combo the swing animation by double tapping square after your swing. This will give you that nice triple threat swing into that spin jumper animation which creates a lot of space. Using the best big fella in the world right now, Nikola Jokic, we do that swing into that spin jumper combo, and Josh Akogi just had no chance. Using KD out of that post pivot, comboing with that swing animation into that fadeaway, man, that's just unfair. Now, these are hard to time, and the farther you are from the basket, the more difficult it is, but look at all the space that this created against Aaron Gordon. He basically couldn't react. So these jab steps, shoulder fakes, a lot of these fake animations are not just cosmetic. They're important in setting up your combos because they create stun animations which frees you up for different counters out of the post. For example, this shoulder fake allows me to create some space into that post hop jumper into an up and under. So while in the post up position, releasing L2 and holding the left stick to the left, to the right, or down will give you different types of disengage animations. Releasing L2 while holding the left stick down is one of my favorite moves. It gives you a nice step back animation to create separation. But holding the left stick to the left or to the right as you disengage will give you different kinds of 
face-up animations which are really great to combo at they can also create stuns so with Joel Embiid right here it was very simple I was holding L2 I released L2 while holding the left stick to the left giving us this nice disengage hezzy animation which I combo into a crossover launch getting Jared Allen stuck in that drive animation which we can counter with a spin dunk simple stuff right here again that disengage animation it's best used when you combo that with your different dribble moves as you open up to your face up position that's face up 101 right there and with the new badges to the triple threat launches and the face up launching bigs these are going to be important for example for jason tatum right here step back into a disengage towards the baseline and combo that with an attack crossover and then a pull back dribble out of it these are the moves that you want to execute Stun created there, confusion comboed into a dribble move and then into a step back jumper and that's just a wide gulf of space. So while in the post of position, rotating the right stick clockwise or counterclockwise and then holding the left stick towards the basket will give you your different spin drives. Either you can drive to the middle or drive to the baseline. And my number one rule for operating in the post is that you go quick. Take a look at that right there. These different types of quick spin animations comboed with your left stick pivots, for example, will create a lot of separation. So setting up your combos, think of it like setting up your dribble combos. One move flows into the next and makes the next one more powerful, especially when you have the right amount of badges. And that's an important point man, one thing as long as you're holding L2, the only way to drive out of this is to rotate the right stick and hold the left stick towards the basket. So whether you're in a pivot position or a face up position, as long as you're holding L2, just rotate the right stick as opposed to letting go of L2 facing up that way you only need the left stick to launch. Next, you have your different spin counter. So after initiating your spin drive, hold the left stick away from the basket and towards the opposite direction of your spin. This will give you a nice spin to counter spin animation, which is one of my favorite ways to avoid contact or even initiate contact and combo that with my different shot creation techniques. So depending on how fast you initiate that second spin animation, you'll get different types of spin animations. And this is a great way once again to create stuns, changes in movement, which you can punish with different types of shot creation techniques. Take a look at this right here. Pivot moves into pump fakes, into that spin spin, into an up and under. Sheesh, man. Again, this is how you want to think of the post. You have to be dynamic. You can't take your time and just basically do your jab steps forever gotta be quick gotta be decisive and combo things up and i am loving a lot of these new spin to counter spin animations that right there is one of my favorites take a look at how the initial spin forces manu to overreact and then that quick and tight spin gets us into contact which we counter with a shimmy fadeaway Another counter out of your spin moves are your disengage combos, which after your initial spin, immediately release L2 and hold the left stick in different directions. It will give you nice post-spin step backs, post-spin snatch backs, post-spin hesitation moves, and a lot of different ways that you can combo to create space, create that initial separation, or face up towards your defender for you to counter. Alright, let's break that down with a detailed example. That right there is a post spin into a hesitation disengage. So while holding L2, I rotate the right stick clockwise, hold the left stick to the left and then immediately release L2 to combo that into that post spin into that hesitation disengage. And then from there you can counter with your different face up move. And if this clip doesn't convince you to use these types of moves, I don't know what will. So as I catch the ball, I already know what to do. The middle is open, so I want to spin towards the middle, rotate the right stick counterclockwise, and then immediately hold the left stick down left to create that snatch dribble, create that separation, and Steven Adams was barbecue chicken. Take a look at that right there. Simple spin into that hezzy, into that crossover, and these moves are really great at creating space. So Brook Lopez is really tough, so I initiate a post spin step back, try to drive middle, he cuts that off, but then I'm dynamically entering into a post shimmy fadeaway. So in NBA 2K24, they added a feature that if you delay your post spin snatch back, just at the right time, it will execute that nice quick snatch dribble even as your body is not completely in a post-up position so after the spin delay when you execute the snatch back and it will give you a nice great momentum breaking snatch dribble that will create a lot of separation as you see right there
Manu was committed to guarding the paint out of the spin so that Quick Snatch created that separation for an open jump shot. You can even combine this with your momentum creating move so even though I missed the shot right here, that was picture perfect. So while holding R2 in the post, tap the right stick down and away from the basket to initiate a step back and then towards the inside shoulder to initiate a post drive. Now tap the right stick to the left or to the right towards your outside shoulder to give you a nice post spin fake. And these moves are great in combination with your different shot creation moves. Take a look at this right here, that post drive into that post hook, it creates forward momentum forcing Anthony Davis to try and guard the paint even more but then we quickly counter that right there with a nice hook shot. So these post spin fakes, these post drives, these post step backs are great ways to combo into your shot creation. Take a look at that right there, I post step back with Kobe giving me that extra bit of space for his patented shimmy fadeaway. And you already know with the Keem the Dream, fake spin one way spin the other and punish your defender combo that with all sorts of moves and you'll be surprised at how effective these are even at generating some overpowered stuns okay next you have your post power back down which is while holding l2 and r2 hold the left stick towards the basket to back down your defender with a lot of strength that force will create that separation which will allow you to finish with your different fadeaways. Take a look at there, right? Josh Okogi was barbecue chicken. Move backwards, enough space for us to counter with a simple fade. So these are the moves that you want to execute. Take a look at that right there. If you simultaneously hold the right stick towards the basket as you initiate that power back down animation which some people are vulnerable to, you get free buckets because it's a seamless animation from one to the next. Alright, next you have your post fadeaway which is done one of two ways. You can hold the left stick down left or down right while holding square in a post up position or hold the right stick down left and down right. So while some players have really good post fade animations which don't need much setup, I think the best way to set up your post fades is really to start by backing your defender down thinking that you're gonna drop step them or initiate some paint move and then when you get a bump animation initiate a fadeaway. Next you have your post shimmy fadeaways which is done differently while holding L2. You want to hold R2, double tap square and then immediately hold the left stick down left or down right and then just keep holding square to finish the shot. So again post shimmy fadeaways work well in combination with badges like dream shake. They create stuns and obviously the move itself just basically creates misdirection because you're shoulder faking different directions into your post fadeaway. So a great example of that right here is we use a dynamic post entry into a post shimmy fadeaway with Bok. Take a look at what happens to Chris Taps Porzingis right here. He basically enters into a stun animation because of that post shimmy fadeaway. Next are your post hooks which are done by holding the right stick up left or up right while in a post up position. So it's a simple move, basically I use the right stick for this move. And again, if you're going up against a smaller defender, just go up with it man. Don't be slow, take a look, if I just took my time right there, Domantas a bonus would be there for a double team, so go quick man. Again, initiate a bump into your nice post hook animation. And these bumps are more powerful than you think, the importance of back down punisher. Take a look at that right there, even though Bam contested, that was a free bucket because of the bump. And like with, with Jokic, these are slow hook shots, so you want to initiate that bump or even use your post spin fakes, your different post drives in combination. Take a look at this move right here. A dynamic post move. After that post spin, and look, we don't get free from Jared Allen. We kind of stumble around. But from here, I hold L2 once again. And then I immediately hold the right stick upright, catching Jared Allen off guard for an open hook shot. Now, while holding L2, immediately tap the right stick down and then hold it up left or up right for your nice post shimmy hook shots. And these are great with guys that have good post shimmy hook shot animations like the Shaq signature one right there. Man, these work great in combo with your power back downs or your different types of post movement combos. So next you have your post hop jumper. So while holding L2, tap square and then hold the left stick in different directions to enter into a post hop jumper. These are great ways to create space, especially with guys like Kobe who has a good post hop jumper animation. And as you can see right there, one of my favorite moves again and it's a recurring theme is as soon as you catch, you already want to be entering into your quick post animations. And even though Brook Lopez got a good contest, take a look at this right here. If you enter it quick enough, you're gonna get an open jumper. And man, you know, you're not limited to executing this while backing your defender down. Try comboing this up with your different post entries while you are moving. Next, we have our power hop into the middle. 
which is done while holding L2, you want to tap square and then hold the left stick towards the basket. Again, this power hop move is a great way for a lot of bigs and strong guards to create that space and separation to get to the basket. Now for guys like Joel MB, just boom, power hop into an open jump shot. But with Akeem right here, what do we do? So after that power hop, we initiate an up and under. But instead of finishing to the right, we finish to the inside of our defender, holding the right stick up left to cut off our defender for an unblockable animation. Now to execute a simple drop step, you want to tap square and hold the left stick towards your outside shoulder. That's a simple move that a lot of people like to use but it's much more difficult to execute these days so I have some few rules against smaller defenders go ahead. But again initiate this off the catch take a look at this right here as soon as I enter into that catch animation I'm already initiating my my drop step basically towards my outside shoulder off the catch these are great ways to catch your defender off guard. But again, these moves are way more powerful when you combine this with your different post movement combos, which I show throughout the video. So here, post pivot, post spin fake into that drop step, easy bucket. So again, you want to be comboing this with your post spin fakes, which I do right here, for example. Or you can even do this while on the move, while in the middle of a post spin drive animation, just execute a drop step. Alright, so now that we know the different types of advanced shots out of the post, comboing them with any of your left stick pivots, your right stick jabs, your swings, your comboing your step backs, your spins, and then your shimmy fades with different pivot animations will give you different ways to attack your defender. After that pivot into that swing animation, I hold the left stick to the left while tapping square to give us that nice escape jumper. So play around with your different post pivot animations after a pivot initiate a step back for example. So here I just pivot, tap square, hold the left stick down left and then hold square again these are the types of combos you can do and trust me man because of the post pivot and how it creates that initial space take a look at here brook has to retreat setting us up for a nice step back animation which is creating a lot of space so again with kd which i showed earlier that swing animation into that spin jumper creates a hell of a lot of space so again try to focus on which types of combos you want to get into Try and learn the different combos out of this. You can get shimmy fades, some nice pivot spins, some nice post shimmy step backs, different types of moves and animations out of your left stick pivots and your right stick jab combos. And lastly, what would a post up tutorial video be without your post up and unders? So after initiating any of your post fakes, just tap square and then Hold the right stick towards the different direction in which you want to finish the second move. So for example, after that post hop jumper, I hold the right stick up left to initiate an up and under to the left. The right stick in different directions will determine the direction in which you are executing your post up and under. You can also execute this with the left stick and square but I feel more comfortable using the right stick. So think of it this way, after initiating a fake the right stick determines the movement of your non-pivot foot to initiate your different types of shots. And the way you want to use post up and unders in NBA 2K24 just got easier. You got to take a look at the footwork of your defender. Josh Okogi right here over commits to trying to close us out. So then I want to hold the right stick to the left to step through and finish uncontested. Same here with Jokic, we initiate a post pivot spin, take a look at DeAndre Ayton's footwork. After our post pivot spin jumper, we initiate a pump fake, take a look, DeAndre Ayton is so out of position that if we move our outside leg, our non-pivot foot to his inside leg, it creates a nice seal that will lead us to an unguardable jump shot. So again here, post shimmy fakes, Joel Embiid over commits, step through, post hop jumper, Brook Lopez overcommits, step through. Okay, now we don't need to just step through, we can also counter with a fadeaway. So again, this is a dream shake in concept. Get your defender to commit going one way. Post hop jumper forces Rudy to close out. We try to a step through to go into a right, but then he's right there, so we hold the right stick down left to counter with a somber shuffle fadeaway. 
And this being NBA 2K24, you got to show love to Kobe Bryant's patented post pivot reverse counter. So it's very simple. Out of this animation right there, if you do a post fade animation or any shot animation that will ex extend his footwork to this specific position right here, just hold the left stick and the right stick towards the left and he will do a reverse pivot fade away counter jump shot. And man, if you're able to hit this in NBA 2K24, it's just a satisfying feeling because you're recreating Kobe Bryant's signature move in NBA 2K. So that's it, man. Not only did I teach you all the moves that you want to know out of the post, but I also showed you the things you should be looking for in creating post-up advantages. It's not simply just using your power, although you can do that, or your height, although you can do that for certain mismatches in NBA 2K24 to be the most successful low post or mid post player that you can be, you want to use everything in combination. Of course, you need to have the right attributes, the right badges, but it's gonna be the moves and the counter moves, the setups and the combos that are going to give you so much success. So I'm showing you right here, post step backs into post drives, again into post step backs. Post shimmies into your post pivots, into your post spins, into your different counter moves. Learn how to do these seamlessly, get your defender off balance. Think of it as creating the way you would do in dribbling, but in this case, it's more punishing because of contact, the proximity to, the, to your defender, so it's going to be important to know how to combo. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful. This is the most intricate and in-depth post video in NBA 2K24 and I dare you to prove me otherwise. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.